welcome back to my shop, YouTube fans. Um, I am uh, asked to do, well, I was asked to do a, a project, some inside out turning demo for my wood turning club. And, uh, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I got a couple days before Valentine's Day, so I thought, well, for a simple inside out turning, we'll do a little heart shaped turning. Um, I got it to different stages. I'm going to show you the different stages. The first thing we do is uh, get a block glued up. I like to glue up the faces of the blocks. Um, so this is the face here and the face here, and obviously the opposite faces. And then this is the side. I don't like to glue up the sides on my wood on my when I do the inside out turnings, if I can help it. Um, so I just drew out a sharp, or uh, uh, half a heart. Uh, this is just... Uh, the first step in the process uh, then we'll do that we'll turn this out when we turn that out it's going to look like this after we've turned it it'll have uh, two little half shaped hearts um, I'm going to do a candlestick holder and two um, these are going to be stems for some wine goblets and so this will uh, basically I'm going to just show you this the, the just the small portion of it. Then maybe at the end I'll show you the, the finished products, but um, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so this is step one. Gluing up our blocks, drawing out this. As you turn it, if you have light wood like this, or well, yeah, if you have light wood, draw an extra dark um, heart with pencil is okay. If you have darker wood like this, then you're going to need to use something like um, and I don't have any uh, chalk with me, but I used chalk on the walnut, on the stems for the walnut, and so that's how I did this particular drew on that one. And then you'll actually just look at the shadow of the project or of the the wood as it's spinning. You'll actually see a shadow of it. I don't know if we're going to see it on the video, but I will try and show it to you on the video. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the first step is to turn out this portion of it and I wasn't going to make a video so I'm a little ahead of that so I will grab another piece of walnut and bring you back to that point um, I'll glue those up when gluing these up <clears throat> it has been my experience I don't know if it's anyone else's but it's been my experience that if you use thin CA glue um, when you're done you can actually pop these apart if you use thick CA glue then you end up having to take it over to the bandsaw and just cutting that um, I haven't had any success popping a, a thick CA glue. Um, when my th thick CA glue sets, um, it sets. And, and I can't just um, take my wedge uh, and just push it in there and then pop apart. But with the thin CA glue, it still holds. And that's why I put the tape on it, because just to be safe, I don't want it flying apart while I'm turning it. But uh, once I'm done turning it, then I press that in there, and it should pop it. Um, should pop it fairly easily. So I'm going to go grab the other two blocks of uh, walnut that I have. And they'll be about this size, um, candlestick holder size, because I was going to do walnut candlestick holders, and then I decided to do maple ones instead. The maple actually turns, for inside out turnings, turns much smoother. Um, get a much cleaner cut, or at least I do, than I do with the walnut. I get a little bit of tear out with the walnut um, every now and then. Like you can see in this piece here, you can see that little bit of tear out. And I've sanded that. Um, I'll take it back over to the planer and get the little tear out here off. But the one inside, I sanded that as much as I could to get it out. So I do prefer maple over walnut. Um, maple just cuts a lot cleaner. So we'll go. We'll get to this point. We'll. Uh, I'll bring the walnut. Over. I'll go grab the walnut. We'll get it set up on the. We're gonna use the jet mini back here. Or the mini jet back here, rather than the Powermatic. Um, just I don't know why. Just because I like to use my little mini jet a lot. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set you up over here, get you close enough where you can see, and we can get some some turning done. There isn't a whole lot of turning to make the actual heart part. Um, and then uh, once you're done with that, you flip this around, and I'll actually show you this step of this process as well we're going to turn this down and actually as you taper um, so the heart starts here 
and ends right about here. And uh, so I don't know if you can see that. So it ends down here and starts up here. And what you want to do is you want to taper down to the bottom. Maybe taper the top just a little bit. Um, and that gives it more depth. So when you're turning it, so you'll actually taper the bottom part of the heart. It'll make it more heart-like. And then, then we'll just turn some stem finial here and here, and we'll be done. So let's get you set up so you can see the turning. Okay, so I brought you in close to the lathe. Um, got everything tightened up. I'm going to just turn it on so to see if you can see the shadow here. Oh, got the lathe in reverse. I'm not sure you can on the video camera see this faint outline right here of the heart or not. Um, I can see it, which is important for me to be able to see, but I don't know if you can see that. Um, so let me darken it up a little bit more. So again, we'll come in here with the Prisma color and make it a little darker. Or in this case, since it's white, a little lighter, huh? All right, let's see if you can see that a little better. Well, a little bit better, but There's about 2,500 RPMs, and that's about what I'm going to be turning at. Somewhere in there. So, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop you, get you in a little pos better position for me, so I can actually get in here. I'm almost doing a shear scraping cut into this wood so I don't get a lot of tear out. And I'm using a half inch bowl gallon. stop periodically every now and then check your cuts make sure they're clean um, good clean cuts um, smooth cuts for the most part um, and then you want to check here uh, um, like Captain Eddie Castellan says every cuts a practice cut and I really believe that when it comes to something like this um, and if this is something you're not comfortable or don't feel comfortable doing don't attempt a turning like this. Only if you're comfortable would I say attempt something like this. Um, you can see I've been watching that line. I got real close up here. Still got a little ways back here to go to get to this line. And I think I'm going to come, um, instead of ending up here, I'm going to come up here a little further um, and come down into this area so that I can cut away all of that. So. I'm going to come in again with that cutting shear scraping cut. I'm going to come in just kind of like, like so against the wood. 
and just come in this way straight in best I can um, and we get a good clean cut and I drew that line there so I can see right where I want to go now just where I wanted to be um, looks like I got to go just a bit deeper right through here we'll use that shear scraping cut and I don't see I don't see you can think you can see that a little bit of tear out right there and a little bit right there so we'll use that shear scraping cut come in here because we started cutting uphill wasn't paying attention so we got a little bit but we need to go a little deeper anyway so we'll just come in a little deeper and get that squared away bowl gouge and work my way up in and sweep in like this um, just working into that angle I have enough space with a larger piece like that where I can actually work in and work up and I'll show you that a little bit but then I'm gonna switch to my uh, um, <coughs> carbide cutter my round nose carbide cutter that I prefer to use for this particular portion of it because I can come in and get there a nice shear scraping cut. If you see, I ground off the back of that so I could get in at that angle that I want. So um, we'll show you a little bit with the bowl gouge and then we'll make the change. Okay, um, we did that just a little bit. We didn't get in very deep with the bowl gouge because it will just be quicker and maybe it's maybe cleaner. We'll see with the other tool. But as you can see, we start with the start with the flute closed as we were coming in, and as we got in there, as we were start to cut in, we open up and then sweep. So I open up and sweep. That's kind of the motion there. So. I'm going to do the same motion basically with with the carbide cutter only it's just a little bit smaller and I can feel like I can get a closer cut in there so that's what we're going to do I think I'm going to change the position of the tool rest because it can't get right where I want to be just perfect so we will just do that up make sure we're on center
I look at this cut inside here as more of a finesse cut. Um, taking small, easy cuts because I don't want to um, really gouge out the inside of that. And I don't. I want to make sure they're good, clean cuts because it's really hard to sand up in here. Um, takes a lot of time to sand by hand, and I don't want to get a lot of tear out like this. See those little pieces that are tearing out? I want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm coming in with more of a sheer cut and just cleaning out at a slight angle. Rather than being flat, I'm at a slight angle. Coming in here and just cleaning out. clean cuts and I'm happy with where it's at so I think I'm gonna call that good maybe try and run the shear scrape down a little bit or maybe I'll just sand it because it's pretty clean as is so now to sand it you can't sand it while it's on and get up underneath this nook here you can, get them, you can come about, you can come level or even with that, but you can't go past that. So that half an inch you see there, um, you can't sand that. So, and whatever you do in one direction, you got to do in the other direction when it comes to sanding. Otherwise, sand the dang thing by hand. Um, so if you don't have reverse, sand it by hand. backwards same amount because what that does that curves over these edges um, so whatever you do one way you got to do the other way um, and it's still not a bad idea to come in and sand a bit by hand um, for any slightly small torn grain you may see and especially when you get up inside this part of the heart up in here you've got to sand that by hand and so I'm not going to bore you with all the hand sanding, so I'm going to stop the video while I do the rest of the hand sanding. <laughs> 